Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is gonna be hopefully a quick video, probably not though. I'm going to explain in detail for you, ladies and gentlemen, business owners, my fellow citizens, that if you business owners maintain an ANSI ANAB certification up on your wall, especially in the realm of AS9100, may God have mercy upon your soul. And I say that in all honesty. We've been involved with Quali for over 40 plus years. We opened up our business in 2011. We gave everything into this business in the sense of quality initiatives. We opened up a registrar, GPMC LLC. I went out into the market and banged on doors. We have a very nice customer base. We tried as we may, some of the customers went over to AS9100 from us. When they tried to knock on Boeing's door, because they're an aerospace company, they're a huge company, they want to get in there. Boeing's personnel, probably on the purchasing form, said, you're not NZ ANAP accredited. You will find out why. And after all of these years, I knew it, I looked at it, and we investigated it, and now here it is. 13 years later, the lucky 13, because that's how long we've been in business as of August. My background being aerospace, medical implants, printing and plastic distribution, where we dealt with all the industries. We looked at Boeing and Boeing is perpetrating a fraud, a fraud. They sit on the accreditation body of ANSI and ANAB. Not only that, they sat on the board of ANAB, the board of directors that directs the company. And they also sat on the board that can grant, suspend and withdraw certification. My customers came back. We can't use your cert. It's not ANSI accredited. It's not. Well, that was in 2012. In 2013, I gave a speech at the American Society for Quality when at the time the ASQ owned ANAP 50%, the American National Credit Board. The other 50% was owned by ANSI. There was a man there, a Dave Levy, a Region 3 director. He had some weight there, Region 3 Director of the ASQ. He said, Mr. Guberman, we support you. ANAB supports you in what you're doing because we believed that as a registration company, independence was the way to go. While at Boeing, they only want ANSI ANAB, ANSI ANAB, <laughs> because they sit on the board. It's worse than the fox watching the hen house. As a matter of fact, you're going to find out through this video that Boeing said, send us your AS9100 certificate. As you can see, a plane going down. Send us your AS9100 certificate, which is for aerospace international standard. Send it in. Send in your parts. And we don't have to send any inspection to check whether you're ma being made in the Grand Canyon parts, maybe in a garage, maybe in the toilet at your local, uh, uh, you know, 7-Eleven. Nobody knew. Just send us your ANSI ANAB accredited AS9100. You're good to go. The other thing, and this is the, one of the worst things, is because our news media doesn't have enough chutzpah to say that you may be sitting on an aircraft one day and your number might be up. Because in quality, we have chance and variation. We have accumulating tolerances in engineering. When you're not going to that facility, it accumulates. And for 22 freaking years, it accumulated. So you may be sitting on that plane and maybe a nut that wasn't torqued properly might wiggle out and you may go down. We have a Mr. Dan Ewell. Dan Ewell. This video today is about Boeing self-inspection program is deeply flawed. And it is. We brought that out in many videos. This gentleman said this. Uh, he was the acting FAA administrator back in 2018. He said, um, <clears throat> and this was the article that will be embedded in this down in the description. FAA defends self-certifying policy for plane manufacturers after Boeing crashes. Acting FAA Administrator Daniel Ewell said that strategy has consistently produced safe aircraft designs for decades. And he said the agency would need 10,000 more employees and additional $1.8 billion a year to do all the work now done by designated employees of companies it regulates. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? So what that means is this. From 2009, Boeing was made an FAA regulator. 
Uh, he said that consistent product safe aircraft designs for decades. Well, he, they changed the design during the time that the FAA gave them regulatory authority. They put the MCAS system in and as a regulator at Boeing. They didn't have to tell a guy like this. He's smiling now. Of course. He's probably golfing at that time with the CEO. Who was that the back then? David, uh, Dennis Mullenberg. We're going to go forward now with this. I hope to be brief, but it can't be brief. As I said, this, this is about Boeing's self-certification program is deeply flawed. ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental corporation. It has federal agencies and corporations on board. I'm not going into too much detail, but here you go. In 2015, Randy Dory, then the Vice President of ANAB, Chairman of the IAF, handed over leadership of the, and by the way, he was also a principal on the 990 tax form, so he constricted the whole quality system between 2009 and 15. He had control and he had power. So what he did was he handed over to this guy, Zhao Jinwu, who's been involved with our quality since 1994. At the time, Zhao Jinwu was also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services. You can see Zhao Jinwu over there in the laboratory in Wuhan, China. Uh, in Wuhan, China. At the same time, about a year later, you had a Miss Pamela Sale. She's in this too. I should show it. I'm going to show it. She is a vice president of uh, quality certification for laboratories. She said from one laboratory to another, there are variances and lack protocols. And he gave them the certificate without truly checking because in 2018, a contingency from the United States of America went to Wuhan, China. And the scientists said, we need more trained people. Please help us, please. And it fell on deaf ears back here. Maybe they were prepping for the release of the COVID virus. It appears that way. From what Pamela Sale is saying is that she basically confessed to the release of the COVID virus. That's basically it. Anzi Anab confessed to it. Also, in a CDC document from 2019, we have all of this. It's going to be in the description down below in articles, feature articles. You'll find this data. I cannot spoon feed you like a baby. But I'm going to tell you this. The CDC came out with a training document for virology labs in China. Virology labs, the only lab that was mentioned in this training document was none other than Wuhan, China. On top of it, on page three, it states that in order for you to have containment within a bio level four laboratory is to have highly trained technicians. That is the backbone of safety. And he gave a ISO certification for laboratory without having properly trained people. That's basically what they're saying in the article. And you have this one from Randy. Randy, let me just read this to you. He said, while my colleagues and I at ANAP can attest to the confidence, the integrity, and competency of registrars accredited by IAF member accreditation bodies. Yes, he can attest to it, ladies and gentlemen, like Pfizer skipping quality processes and standards, and they're accredited more than likely by ANSI, ANAP, or IAF. Let me get through this. The international accreditation form is a, is a, uh, company that harbors, I should say harbors, is a repository for both national and international accreditation bodies. ANSI ANAP are underwriters for the IAF and any organization that is an IAF MLA, multilateral agreement organization, or MRA, a multi-regional agreement. Are you catching on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm saying it very slowly. So he basically said they have confidence in the integrity of quality. Well, Pfizer skip quality processes and standards is credited by one of those companies. So whether it's ANAP or anybody else, ANSI ANAP. You have Johnson & Johnson, same thing. They 75,000 vials of uh, COVID got returned. You have Lockheed Martin after their 801st ship, uh, F-35, are still producing uh, um they're still producing aircraft with problems. You have Boeing who fudges documentation. Boeing who a plug pops off the door in Alaska Air. Boeing who got fined $8.1 million just recently for the Bell Boeing composite facility. You cannot make this up. And how can one have, while my colleagues and I at ANAP can attest to the confidence and the integrity and competency of registrars accredited by IAF members. And you have Boeing sitting on there. 
That's not confidence in integrity equality. And let's continue. You have ANAP sitting on ANSI's board. You have seven different registrars that sit on ANSI's board right over by ANAP that they use for their accreditation body. Is there any confidence in the integrity and quality of these certs that they dispense? Of course not. There is nobody watching over anyone, okay? It's a shooting match. You have the factor, you have 10 different registrars in China that can issue an ANAP accredited certification. You have the factor that ANSI took over complete control over ANAB in 2018. And they were sitting on the IAF during the time that the Communist Chinese National was on board. Who are members of ANSI? You have the FDA, FAA, CDC, NIH, Boeing, Lockheed, um, Boeing, Lockheed, Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, DOD, DOJ. They're all sitting on ANSI. And by the way, Zhao Jinwu, Zhao Jinwu, the guy I pointed out to you, the communist Chinese national who's been involved with our quality since 1994, is mandated by his country of origin, communist China, to take our data through the China National Intelligence Law, article number seven. You have the factor also, here you go. You have, uh, you have Iran and Pakistan. Iran, who most recently got their certificate taken away from the IF because of lack of payment, not because of quality, lack of payment. Did you hear that, uh, ladies and gentlemen? And you also have Pakistan who harbored Osama bin Laden and Anzi and Anab sit by them. Isn't that nice? And here you go. Here's Zhao Jinwu giving out a certificate to a laboratory that really didn't deserve it. And that was stated in an article in 2008 when the, uh, when the uh, specialists went from the United States over to Wuhan and they said, we need trained technicians. Well, part of the audit is supposed to be issued a certificate and make sure that the system is in compliance. Well, Pamela Sale says, ah, I don't give a shit about the system. Just give them the piece of paper. And here's Pamela Sale right now. Pamela Sale said, one of the issues is that there is no commonly agreed upon set of standards in that forensic labs, bio-level four labs, phlebotomy labs, I added those two laboratories in there, around the country have to follow. Instead, there are informal guidelines that labs can choose to follow or not. And here, out of a report from 2011, you have to read this, that it is no more than a badge of honor. The certificate, as we've seen in Wuhan, China, does nothing to protect the safety and reliability of the laboratory because the scientists there were begging the American representatives that they need trained technicians, which they never received. On top of it, for those people who listen to Mr. Anthony Fauci talk about his bullshit, I don't know anything about the gain of function. Well, here we go. A workshop was done in China, the second annual workshop, um, of the challenges of emerging infectious diseases, of global security. And the first item of business is gain of function research. Isn't that nice? And we have a very special cast, Xi Jinping. Here he is talking about, about, <laughs> talking about his China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. He's perpetually smiling, isn't he? <laughs> also, we have this. This will tell you without a shadow of a doubt that ANZI ANAB is very much involved with the government. The worst thing is, is on this, we have many others. This is a uh, standard operating work order from the State Department and uh, from 2018 when China had the clutches on the IAF from 2015 to 21. So basically the State Department allowed Chinese nationals to go in there in the sense of, the, the, in fact, they're even calling it out here. There you go. It states over here. ANAB is an anti ANAB is an underwriter for the International Accreditation Forum, and it states within this contract, if you look further, I only gave you a part of it, it states that the, the company that's doing it must be IF recognized and put an IF symbol on the certificate. So they basically invited Communist China in there. Now we come up to Boeing. This is a good one, Boeing. And I apologize for the length of this, but you ladies and gentlemen need to know this. Boeing, here it is. Boeing sits on ANSI's board. Boeing sits on ANSI's board that forced down the throats of their suppliers and subcontractors, ANAP. Yes, they sit on the board of directors and they sat on the board that could grant, suspend, and withdraw certification. You find anything wrong with that? Let's go on a little bit further. 
My customers, when I originally opened up the uh, registration company back in 2012, 2011, I opened up the consulting. 2012, I broke the company in half uh, in the sense that we opened up GPMC LLC. And this is on Boeing supplier portal. Must be ANSI, ANAB, or internationally equivalent. This really is for competition purposes. And I want to show you this because this came out in 2016, this note that Randy sent us. And I, I really want to read this to you. Here it is. And Boeing never got the memo from Randy because their supplier portal should have never said, for competition purposes, must be ANSI ANAP. If you look on Lockheed's uh, you know, work orders and all this and uh, requirements, you'll find ANSI ANAB on that as too. In fact, we have a letter from a Miss Lisa Gross in 2015 when we warned Lockheed about China takeover of the IF. She says, we only accept accreditation bodies that are IF recognized. And by the way, 2009, Lockheed Martin gets hacked by China, taking their F-35. In 2012, a division of United Technologies, Sikorsky Aircraft, gets hacked by China. In 2015, guess what happens? Lockheed Martin goes to pay, you know, buy Sikorsky aircraft. And you can never make this up, okay? You can never make this up in the fact that, yes, they go to buy it and they bought the darn thing for $9 billion. Yes, $9 billion. In fact, in the Connecticut Mirror, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it said. And the worst thing is, is that I've contacted Richard Blumenthal's office concerned with this whole issue about Boeing, about them giving up, um, uh, about them becoming a FAA regulator in 2009, and also by them accepting just a piece of paper as a way to verify a company supplier's quality. And then you have this. With China's okay, Lockheed Martin closes in on the purchase of Sikorsky aircraft, and you have Richard Blumenthal, Rosa DeLauro, Jim Himes, and Christopher Murphy all praise Lockheed for working with communist China. Is there something wrong? Well, let me read you Randy's thing. He never sent the memo upstairs. He should have, because my customers still had a complaint. In fact, one we lost said, Daryl, I must take the road of least resistance because Boeing was always busting their stones. He finally rolled over and played dead. Brian, your business will be closed. Give it another five years, you'll be done. And I make it, that's not a promise, that's a guarantee because you take the road of least resistance, you're always going to end up to be a loser, a failure. And here's what it said. But we recognize and accept that there are conformity assessment bodies and accreditation bodies such as your body and your accreditation body that are not part of the IF and ILAC structure. So they recognized us without putting a note into Boeing saying, you know, GPMC is acceptable. You can also use that registrar. They didn't. They kept it a monopoly. On top of that, to have the confidence of the integrity of quality. Remember what Randy said in that email to us? Um, here it is. While my colleagues and I at ANAB can attest to the confidence and integrity and competency of registrars accredited by IF member accreditation bodies, of course. And then you find out that when they were a regulator, Boeing, they were fudging documentation. Fudging it, ladies and gentlemen. Fraudulent fudge. <laughs> and you know who sits by Boeing? The FAA. The FAA made them a regulatory authority. You also have the Department of Justice who's investigating Boeing. You have the FBI. These are only some, ladies and gentlemen. And then you have the Department of Transportation. So now we're going to do the brass tacks for you, ladies and gentlemen. Here you go. This is the actual, we have the whole thing. It calls out ANSI ANAB in there. It must be ANSI ANAB. Or at that time it was ANSI NAPRAP, but it's really ANSI ANAB now. But this was in 2002. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. But anyway, it says on-site Boeing survey or supplier quality system, if need be, our preference is to deal with proven suppliers with excellent quality performance and not have to do on-site quality system surveys. So that meant this, and I'm going to break it down for you, ladies and gentlemen. You send in your AS9100 certificate, of course, ANSI ANAB accredited, and what it says down below is it true, a partner in failure because everything they touch, it fails. Uh, you have this and uh, you send it in, and what you do is you take your parts and you ship them to Boeing, and Boeing doesn't have to send any source inspectors to find out whether you're producing it in a Grand Canyon, in a swamp, 
in a lake, in your garage, in a bathtub in your house. They don't have to check. As long as you have this certificate and it's ANSI, you ain't have a credit, you're good to go. And the last thing is, they were made a regulator in 2009. So when you hear this bullshit about the MCAS system and how the Boeing hoodwinked the FAA, the FAA is guilty as charged. They are guilty. Mike Whitaker should have his head handed to him because if he doesn't know this and he's trying to hide it from the public, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we don't hide it. We expose it because your ass is on the line when you sit on one of those planes. I know what you're saying. Daryl, it's safer to ride in a plane than to, than to drive a car. More people get killed in car accidents. So let me tell you, when one of those planes go down, 100 to 300 people get killed in one shot. 80-20 rule. 80% you're going to die, 20% you may live. But this is what caused it. An FAA regulator, Boeing, was made. And these people are sitting back, <laughs> they're laughing. You know, rather than be having, being prideful, Rather than David Calhoun going to the golf course, rather than Jim Tassett playing golf too, probably with Dave, comparing notes, how much did I get for his bonus this year after cost-cutting initiatives, not sending quality people out. But let me just say this. This guy should have been down on the floor or his management team, somebody should have been down on the floor cheering the workers on, having prideful things, being prideful of the fact that you are something special. Instead, since 2002, send us your certificate, send us your parts, and we don't have to send any inspection in. <laughs> since 2009 to present, we're FAA regulator. And then David Calhoun has the audacity to come out when the whole door plug happened on the Alaska Air saying, our regulator, our regulator is looking over 100% of these aircraft. Well, Dave, you are fucking wrong. I must tell you this. If I was the board member, I would ask you to step down. Grab a hold of your pen and pencil and clipboard. Go back wherever you came from, GE, because this guy is no aerospace guy. And I can honestly say it. I've watched the degradation of Boeing since Dennis Mullenberg and before. I've been involved with quality for 40 plus years. You have the only one up there who's truly honest that I see is Patrick Shanahan who was the deputy, uh, deputy Secretary of Defense under Trump, but he was also now the CEO of Sparrow Aerosystems or Aerospace Systems, okay? He's the CEO. When he was asked about uh, the FAA, when he was asked about the F-35 program, he said it's fucked up. So Dave, if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but when you have the Deputy Secretary of Defense say that, he's a little bit higher than I am on the totem pole, then I can use his verbiage too. It's like the Webster Dictionary. It's a good. And that's what I'm gonna say. He said it's fucked up. Not only that, after their 801st ship that they built, F-35, it's fucked up. They still have rejections. You know, continuous improvement is always continuous improvement. They built 801 ships, looks like continuous improvement failed. They have their LCS Latoro battleship. It failed. Pfizer failed. Johnson Johnson failure. Recalls. Rather than taking pride, these guys take their bonus and run because look what happened with Dennis Wallenberg over here. 300 and some odd people are dead. He gets his contract negotiated, $60 million, and he walks off. I guess it's an insurance death benefit. And that's what they do. They get the golden handshake and the poor person, the man and woman down on the floor of these companies, when they need a bonus, they cut back. You know what? These guys could give half of their salary back to the manufacturing arena and the manufacturing arena would be very happy about that. And they could live on what? Five million bucks rather than 22 million? My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. And this is Boeing self-inspection program is deeply flawed. And every time you sit your ass on that plane, just remember that 22 years, that part could have been made in a sewer, in the Grand Canyon, in the backyard, in a, on a dirt floor. Who knows? All because they have an ANSI ANAB certificate. Isn't that quaint and special? I thank you.